Tsai Wai Rip has, has uh, brought out uh, another brilliant exhibition, uh, opening, uh, as Peter has said, to a new uh, universal uh, perspective by an integration by the result of an intense research project and integration of curatorial uh, and academic uh, performance uh, and now a stimulus uh, to go fur going further. We have just done it uh, now and uh, or rather falling back uh, to my last uh, thoughts, uh, appreciating the, uh, uh, the achievements. Uh, in the chain of activities, conference and seminars uh, of the ex voto uh, of the offering uh, project, I'm for the moment the last uh, to speak. Uh, after all the thought-provoking texts uh, published in the two books edited by Itai, the lectures of today is a discussion of right now and uh, in view of the objects gathered uh, at the uh, Bard College uh, 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 exhibition spaces, uh, becoming rooms of miracles, uh, if, if you uh, want. Uh, the marvelous and the miraculous uh, being so close uh, uh, to each other in historical imagination uh, and contemporary uh, experience. Now, uh, last voice for today, but there will be many voices by uh, the debates, dialogues uh, uh, being happening around this uh, marvelous uh, exhibition. But do not expect me to add uh, other aspects to these uh, multi layered discussions of votive offerings in various cultures, from uh, pagan antiquity to the three uh, monotheistic religions, my pictures are mostly evocative, uh, uh, the three monotheistic religions, uh, quite heterogeneous uh, within themselves uh, in uh, Buddhism uh, and Shintoism, uh, etc. I just show you, uh, passing by, uh, some of uh, the pictures uh, which have taken place, which have been in place at all. Uh, in the uh, in the exhibition and in the books uh, being uh, published, and uh, as we have it's a wonderful uh, <laughs> thing, uh, and as we have a uh, response to to Itai's uh, obsession with donkeys, uh, and uh, well, uh, and uh, and there is, uh, but it's a serious thing, uh, and beyond the religious, um, also in the horizon, uh, also in the horizon of. Uh, national memories, uh, collective uh, and personal experiences, uh, and the cult of the death, uh, if you want. Uh, and it was just said now. Uh, rather allow me to formulate a few questions um, and make a few remarks uh, post festum in reaching, and reaching the field empirically or conceptually, as you have done, exposes the inherent problems of the academic, not only academic discourses, uh, of ex voto and offerings even more, because it's not meant uh, as a critique, but uh, a compliment. Uh, we now see, we now see the potential uh, and limits of the concept of ex voto uh, more clearly. Um, I feel a need for a new anthropological approach or a new anthropology, a new anthropology uh, working together with artistry and other disciplines to do a further step to deal with the tension between the supposed universality of the phenomenon. Uh, and the necessity to map the differences and enormous variety of specific forms and dynamics of uh, votive offerings. And to this, let's say, A, uh, belongs also the study of languages of offering. Uh, and my major point is the following, uh, is an invitation to understand the ex voto in a broader context uh, of the role of the religious for the life of people uh, individually uh, and uh, as uh, communities. Uh, and this brings us uh, all to the interplay between the material and uh, aesthetic practices uh, in the horizon uh, between the material world uh, and imaginary world, which are not two uh, obviously separate uh, entities. Um, agents of faith um, uh, could also be called agents of life. Uh, the title is suggestive, Agents of Faith. I see it primarily in relation to the intrinsic constellations of the votive process itself um, and the personal engagement of people in their concerns, anxieties, and hopes, and not exclusively in, the, uh, ref in reference to a given system of belief or faith, perhaps not the best term uh, for some of the religions we are dealing with. In fact, uh, trust 
in the act of voting itself is part of this phase. Not always guaranteed, um, I mean the phase of the people in what they are doing, uh, but an attempt uh, as part of other attempts. Um, we could also turn it around uh, in a theological perspective or in the perspective of the theologians, typical for monotheistic religions at least, <coughs> considering motives uh, made in calamities. Uh, God, some, God or God sometimes put to test the believers, uh, traveling, the believers traveling in the storm or suffering from illness. It is there where faith uh, may be confirmed or strengthened uh, in extremis. In this way, it saves the believers two times. No? Not only her or his life, but also his body or his body, uh, but also her or his soul. The overwhelming presence uh, of ex voto, um, I cannot say ex votos, I'm sorry, the overwhelming presence of ex votos uh, in Christianity uh, tends to dominate the field. Uh, one must admit, too attractive are the Bavarian, Neapolitan, uh, and uh, Brazilian uh, cases. Uh, that's for sure. I mean, we are all uh, aware of that. Uh, too specific, the elaboration of the two basic forms. Uh, the body parts. Uh, I'm lost there. Wait a second. I have to go back to my. Uh, yeah, I go here. Okay. Uh, uh, too specific. Uh, well, oh, anyway, the elaborations. <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a trick. Okay, there's too specific uh, the elaboration of the two um, uh, basic forms. A, body parts in wax, silver, terracotta, cutter pistol, or other materials accompanied often now by photo, by, from the 19th century by photographs, and B, the well known ex voto tabulette uh, tablets, uh, with, uh, which uh, you get thousands of times if you look uh, for ex voto uh, in the search machines. And here I spring over to. One of them, okay, this one, um, uh, a Mexican one, obviously. And it's one of the merits of this project to have brought together highly evocative objects from these traditions, but to do justice to other religious cultures um, of offerings uh, as well. On the other hand, it allows the inspiring crossing of gazes. On the other, uh, on the one hand, it allows the inspiring crossing of gazes. On the other, uh, it stresses the topic. Uh, up to the point uh, to make it a special field with a much broader horizon of religious uh, material uh, studies. Let me quickly argue along these lines and restate some old and new questions and paradoxes. Uh, votive offerings, as we discuss them here, in many cases are a means of accumulation and display. Uh, we have seen a series, and don't go back to that. They are a, a locative practice. They are, they are there to surround a sacred object or image or to be placed at a sacred spot. By doing so, they attract others, and for the whole, they invest, they invest the place. Um, it's part of this economy we spoke about, uh, the place, thing, uh, image uh, with sacred energy. These are the basic dynamics of a miracle working statues and images transculturally. Investing is often to be understood in concrete terms. A votive offering uh, of a mantle uh, for the virgin uh, or for the goddess uh, Athena. No? Uh, done individually or collectively, uh, annually or in times of crisis, uh, think of the Parthenon trees uh, with the offering of the Peplos uh, or the Virgin uh, of Loreto. At a certain point, and we have also spoke about, spoke about this, um, offerings need an institutional handling, uh, the act as well as the object. And there is a point of tension, so to speak. Uh, the ex voto uh, implorer can become uncanny uh, rubbish, uh, so to speak. Uh, they, uh, they tend to overcome the sacred place itself, uh, hanging from the ceiling, uh, falling on the people, decaying, etc. This is not to illustrate this argument. It's a well disposed, well ordered, well structured space uh, in function. Uh, anyway, hanging from the ceiling, falling onto people, uh, so they need to make voting, so to be killed by voting, so to speak, uh, uh, decaying, etc. as we Though, for example, from the uh, from text speaking about uh, the Santissima Nunziata uh, in Florence, uh, the religious institutions may involve them uh, in their economy, uh, but also need these institutions also need uh, to handle them uh, in theological, economical, uh, and pastoral terms. And already rather early, a long-living argument uh, came into play. Uh, ex voto 
uh, have, be se have been seen uh, as a form of primitivism, uh, predating uh, the religious institutions itself uh, as popular survivors of paganism uh, with magic ideological roots, the classical, uh, let's say, Catholic or uh, the Tridentine argument of the early modern period. Also articulated, again, I argue with, uh, in a Catholic context, by means of material practices uh, which potentially threaten the official discourse. Famous is Warburg's case uh, of radical similarity of certain uh, Vax Voti, Boti, uh, and the rise of support with uh, in the 15th century, which he brings back to uh, Etruscan practices, uh, unsublimated, uh, so to speak. Just read uh, the few lines. Uh, this lawful and persistent revival of barbarism with wax image effigies uh, set up in church in their moldering fashionable dress uh, begins to cast a truer and more favorable light on the inclusion of portrait likenesses on a church fresco uh, of sacred scenes. Uh, by comparison with the magical fetishism uh, of the waxwork cult, uh, this was a comparatively discreet attempt uh, to come closer to the divine uh, through a painted uh, simulacrum. Very interesting how he, in a certain way, uh, how to say, avoids the sacred image, uh, turns around it. It's, it's a little bit iconoclastic, this, uh, this phrase. And it goes on, uh, and I don't go on. Um, I appreciate uh, Itai's uh, approach. Uh, it was not, well, it's by chance, it was not uh, good, it was good not to focus on the discourse of magic. Uh, to see ex voto uh, exclusively or primarily in the horizon of magic, amulets, even if you have to rethink it, uh, but explore the triangulations and institutionalizations of ex voti or ex voto, <laughs> as it has been done. Uh, for their relatives, uh, the relics, since yeah, we are here, uh, and study the frameworks in which they are performed, sometimes fostered, sometimes handled critically by theologians and religious uh, authorities. Nonetheless, there is a point in the uh, votive uh, Rite du Passage uh, where one may, one, one may highlight uh, the one or the other of the bonds involved, that of the per of persons of the person is a votive object, or the ex voto object to the sacred image, and the sacred image to the divine it makes present or represents, and in a final circuit uh, between the votary uh, and the god. Uh, matching discourse uh, would focus, for example, on the person, on the, on the person to the ex voto relationship, and that is what Warburg uh, actually does. In any case, uh, we speak about passages from the immaterial vote uh, to the divine, to the fulfillment by the material offering, uh, in all of uh, which a complex interplay of prox proximity and distance uh, is involved, to be bridged uh, and to be kept uh, in the same moment. The leg, the leg, um, is it an artificial, is it a sacrificial substitute uh, of a leg I have not lost or an image of my threatened leg? Uh, both cases exist as the relationship to the body as a whole, uh, who carries it, uh, as a part of itself, as an ex voto, is highly complex uh, in Greek or Roman uh, antiquity uh, and beyond. There are other body parts uh, which could be uh, put into the discussion here. Or, very quick, close your eyes for a second. I go to, uh, back to Catholicism. Um, <laughs> or, <laughs> as another uh, possibility, uh, the offering may not be a simile uh, of me, uh, are related in some way to my body uh, and its parts, but of the sacred image, uh, doubling it, sometimes becoming itself miraculous, or again its adornment, a dress or, frequent, uh, or frequently a jewelry. My very first encounter with an uh, unpublished source about uh, ex voto was in the archive of uh, Salimina Jewelry. I found a 15th century description of all jewels. Uh, uh, the, the virgin was uh, carrying. And one of them was, let's say, uh, false uh, a rupee earrings uh, given by a, by a student to the virgin. So the highest official uh, Madonna of the city of Rome in the same moment uh, is a, a private devotional image who carries uh, earrings of uh, fake uh, jewels. Well, uh, furthermore, uh, furthermore, the ex voto must not be necessarily uh, for myself uh, uh, but uh, could be done uh, for a family me member, as here the fictitious ex voto of uh, Frida Kahlo 
uh, done by uh, done by her by her parents. No, um, a a for a family member, a member of a group, and so forth. The individual act uh, with its emotional intensity and sometimes displayed, sometimes hidden intimacy, uh, often began in a rupture of time, catastrophe, or crisis, becomes then standardized, formal-like. The individual expression into an archetypal uh, individual expression uh, transforms into an archetypal case uh, of human experiences, uh, which are collectively understandable, and thus the thousand uh, broken legs. Uh, what's coming in? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and thus a thousand broken legs and racks in the rooms of Milagros. Interesting when it comes to non-human objects as motives, crutches, chips, toys, and instruments, I cannot go into that here. And there are other practices, the ribbons, the ribbons around the trees, but also in the, um, how was the English word, the, the iron gateway of the, uh, of the, the, the yeah, well, the, uh, enclosures uh, of the of churches, uh, like in like in Brazil, the Brazilian churches, uh, like Nosso Senhor de, de Bahia, no, de Salvador de Bahia, no, um, uh, Senhor de Bonfim, no. Uh, the uh, but there is an interesting case because it's an overlay uh, of religious practices, and there is a vote we know of people, uh, you know that, no, who were uh, promising to clean the church uh, every week uh, in favor of something, but these people were. Uh, let's say combining a condomble religion with, uh, with Catholicism, uh, and the church authorities at a certain point uh, didn't accept it. Uh, so they were only allowed to clean the steps of the church and not the church itself. I mean, that's a very interesting case of this kind of contested uh, and then uh, negotiated uh, as, as spatial uh, dynamics, uh, which here are with the ribbons, uh, which overcover. You see the, uh, the iron uh, here, no? Okay. Uh, ex voto, as we learned uh, from the show, uh, an, an important interplay uh, of the individual and the collective, the private and the public. The ritual act uh, can perform uh, in between. As we also learned, not all votive offerings are to be preserved and displayed. Some are burned, uh, like the wax womb in Itai's opening image in the catalog, a spectacular case of alienation of the simile of the body thrown into the flames to achieve divine protection uh, for the mother and her child uh, to be born. And there are collective and uh, political uh, votes. Uh, mosques and churches, temples and uh, mass pilgrimage in order to achieve um, uh, or to celebrate victory or the end of a plague, like the salute the church in uh, Venice, etc., etc. Uh, and, uh, and we should in no case under-evaluate the dimension of personal and collective representation uh, the intention to create uh, memory by means of votive gifts uh, and displays. All this has been studied in numerous single publications, but we now have an excellent new base to rethink it uh, with new trajectories. For me, the most intriguing point of the whole story, however, uh, is what I have called uh, a, a, or rather the question uh, of life and death. Um, for in religious experiences and belief systems, if one may call them like this, uh, life and death are interrelated in the same complex way as is the realm um, of the living uh, and the death. We could say that in discussing the votive process, we separate between things done por remedio anime uh, and those por remedio corporis. That seems artificially for those for the body and those for the soul. Uh, but the latter would be, uh, the, for, the, for the body, would be the recovery of the body and the continuation of earthly life, of earthly living as a good life, which is not always that what the religion uh, itself claims to be the best. The obsession of many people with health and long living and the appealing uh, to the death ancestors or saints makes it clear. The borders between the two worlds should be closed, but also cannot um, really and also must be uh, a bit open to allow uh, respective uh, interaction. Um, these are, but see the motives, you showed them, but see the motives uh, for, is that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, but see the motives uh, for good uh, death and post-mortem travel uh, in the exhibition, which really is a very important uh, chapter bridging the, uh, the two uh, realms. Uh, there are, um, there is a votive responsibility also for the death, 
uh, there's people who are dead. Uh, they need uh, heavenly uh, money and iPhones uh, as in the uh, Chinese. This is, well, this is fake money and this paper iPhones, uh, as you must know, in the uh, tomb, uh, tomb uh, sweeping days, no? uh, when you clear the tombs and you make this, uh, these offerings. And they must take, and they must take care of us uh, respectively. Accumulation of things in tombs uh, and ritual practices around tombs come into mind. In fact, I would be interested uh, in the comparative anthropological study of object accumulations in the horizon of religion uh, and the cult of death. Hordes, I mean, again, look to you, uh, um, bur um, buried offrenders in temples uh, or human created uh, and natural, with human created and natural objects like shells, etc., as in the Templo Mayor uh, in uh, Theodor de Mexico. Um, there is more, uh, what, and I come soon to a conclusion of the conclusion, uh, there, is, uh, there is more uh, what the ex auto uh, project uh, has brought on the table. I just saw this tzatzas, as remember this morning, a presentation because they sometimes they, they include um, ashes of uh, sacred people, so they are in themselves getting uh, relics, if you want, at a certain point. So that's an interesting uh, passage between the uh, the relic and the ex voto. I think this is to be explored. I will say it at the end of my uh, next page, and this is the last one. Uh, there is more what the ex voto project has brought to the, on the table. If we extend the ex voto discourse, uh, as the project has done and the uh, exhibition uh, starts with, uh, to the uh, Vietnam Memorial uh, and to the cult of the Shiite martyrs, and I agree that it makes sense doing so, we open the field not only to interrelations. Uh, and translations from the personal memory and religious discourse to the political and national context, as well as vice versa. Uh, spontaneously started by people in the case of the Vietnam Memorial and officially installed in the other uh, case uh, within the horizon of Shiite ritual culture, uh, but with an extreme emotional dimension in both cases. We should be aware then uh, how this is shifting with the next generation from a direct personal memory into something else without losing its intensity. And this was my point. The everyday objects um, perform at the borderline between the living uh, and the death. And that's what the show starts with. If we give the question back, this question back to the, to the life, life and death, uh, to the religious uh, votive cultures themselves, where we, where we then draw the lines between the caring for a good life uh, and the here and now, and that of for a good afterlife also consider the relation uh, of the living uh, and the dead. Or it is perhaps not really our task doing so, but rather to map the culturally and historically divergent rituals, passages, material, aesthetic practices, individual and collective as they might be, and to deal with this problem, um, which deal with this problem. Burning a candle for your beloved, uh, if not for yourself or your cat, uh, and one for your death uh, parents is a is certainly a too simplistic uh, and Catholic way of handling it. Or bringing offerings to a Muslim and a Hindu shrine or a Christian church in a multi- and interreligious space where you just take your baraka wherever you can get it and try to invest on all these places. Um, well, um, and also interesting to, if in the case of new religions entering the field, like with the, uh, with the Christianization uh, of, let's say, of Mexico, uh, what is happening with the very strong ex voto culture uh, being built up in Mexico uh, by means of uh, of Flenda traditions of the pre-Columbian time? How do they interrelate? Uh, there is no simple answer to that, but it's very important. Um, all questions, uh, again, uh, regarding the role of religious, uh, of the religious for performing uh, one's life. Is there a universally shared need of protection for basically uh, shared human concerns? Uh, which uses religious, a religious fear uh, for a kind of assurance? Or are the people's life embedded so deeply uh, in religious practices, which are comparably uh, from, from one from the other, uh, but even related in some cases? Uh, an artificial alternative, in fact. So that means having people being basically caring about their life and then uh, look what they can get from the religion, or are they religious in themselves and from there? Uh, the process starts. Uh, and to come to the end uh, with my wish list of further explorations, uh, there are many other dynamics regarding the accumulation 
and investments of objects in various religions, uh, which we must consider. The relation between uh, ex votos, uh, I say, the ex votos and relics uh, comes into mind. Think of objects in touch with the holy shrine, uh, pilgrim souvenirs, uh, or images of saints uh, be worn on or bound to the body. Somewhat inverse, no? uh, the alter ego of the uh, ex voto uh, practice, or other tokens of baraka put in the car, uh, ships, uh, and so forth. Uh, they are the alter ego, as I say, of the ex voto, uh, and there are cases in which an ex voto becomes a relic uh, or miracle working uh, item. If they don't work, uh, if the relics don't work, we need a vote, so to speak. Or think of Martyr's instruments. It's a very delicate and very interesting um, uh, problem. Or think of Martyr's instruments. Consider the Christian logic. The saw becomes the token uh, of the saint killed by it. Uh, putting the body uh, into pieces, as in the votive pro uh, process. And he then becomes uh, the patron uh, of the carpenters and take it into other religions with the, uh, the, uh, the concept of sacrifice. So, And the discourse of sacrifice, the martyrs and soldiers, as a kind of votive offering themselves, uh, which call for others to keep it uh, and their death uh, alive, so to speak. Uh, to conclude... Well, okay, <laughs> I don't know, uh, it was already out. Uh, to conclude, I think in the next step, uh, the topics uh, could, be perfectly, uh, could be perfectly explored in the horizon of an anthropology of and historical ecology of material practices. And there is obviously an art of the ex voto, and uh, the exhibition invites us to think about the aesthetics between the material and imaginary practices. We spoke about this with Strauss. Uh, in the lunch break, which is an extremely uh, interesting topic. I don't go into that. And there is also a path which leads to uh, consumer culture uh, and mass production of the wearing of ex-voto uh, on your own body. This brings it back, uh, your breasts to your own, your votive breasts to your own breasts, so to speak. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.